Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> good morning, good morning, good morning. Are you here with me? If so, somebody say God is good. So I can know I'm not alone in this thing. So I can know I'm not the only one who made it to another Friday. If you're with me, if you're with me. I want you to know that you made it. Many people didn't make it. A lot of people gave up. A lot of people turned back. But you made it. Somebody say, I made it. I made it. I made it. Somebody say, I made it. 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 No matter what the enemy threw at you. No matter what you had to go through in this week. No matter what it looked like. No matter what it sound like. No matter what it seemed like. You made it. I don't know what you've been going through on your side of heaven, but you've made it. That's victory by itself, the fact that you've made it to another Friday. From last Friday to this Friday, accidents and incidents, chaos, calamity, all breaking out throughout the world, but you made it. Someone died yesterday and last night, but you made it. Somebody say God is good if you're yet with me. God is good just because of that. I mean, I'm an expectation for God to do something new in my life, too. I'm, exe I'm an expectation for exceedingly, abundantly, above all I could ask or think. It hasn't entered into my heart, my mind, my eyes haven't seen it, ears haven't heard it. But I'm thankful for what God has already done. God bless you also. I want to ask you a question. How are you feeling today? As we've stepped into this Friday, we're approaching Saturday. How are you feeling in this moment? What's coursing through your mind in this moment? And that question is going to lead to another question. How are you feeling? What have you been at a war with? What have you been going through? How are you feeling? Better than the start of the week? That's good. Confused and lost, okay? I shouldn't have scratched my eye because now I put lotion in my eye. So pray for my eye. Confused and lost. Better. Tired. Good. You miss him. Hopeful. Victory. H hello. I know that's right. Sing warfare a new way. I know that's right. Shifting perspectives. Overwhelmed. Discouraged. But still pressing on his word. Hopeless. Patient. Kai, I see you. Excited for what he has in store. Mm-hmm. You're angry, you had a terrible week, grateful, anxious. Angry, the Bible says it's okay to be angry, just don't stay angry. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. And while you're experiencing that anger, don't sin. But it's all right to be angry. Just don't let your anger take you out of character. Just don't let your anger change your faith. We're humans and we have emotions. And it's okay to feel how you feel and experience whatever it is that you're experiencing. But you cannot become that thing. Somebody say, I'm becoming better. She's telling me the worst things and it hurts. Your mom doesn't understand. You're unmotivated. The Bible tells us, if you'll listen to me while I'm not in the frame. The Bible tells us that there will be seasons in our life where nobody understands what we're going through. Nobody understands what we're experiencing. I'll be picking up the phone, trying to call somebody for the help. I'll be picking up the phone, trying to call somebody to give me advice. And there'll be no one else in the world who'll be able to get me through that season but God. There are some seasons that only God can get you through. If you're listening to me, though you can't see me, somebody say, God is with me. 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 If there's one thing God is, it's with me. God is with me. God is with me. God is with me. I forgot to pour my tea. <clears throat> I can feel my vocal cords not warmed up yet. <laughs> I could feel them not warmed up yet. God is with you. I got this cup from Target. So shocking, right? Oh my gosh. And I chose this cup for a reason. Not chose it from Target for a reason, but chose it just now for a reason. And I'm going to tell you why. Hallelujah. Oh, you can read it? Can you read it already? Mm. Somebody say, I'm enjoying the journey if you're with me. 
I'm enjoying the journey. 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 Understand life is a journey, ladies and gentlemen. From the seven days, last Friday to this Friday, to the next seven days, all of life is a journey. In fact, that takes me to my first text. We're going to go here. I love you, Lord. Can I pray for you before we go forward? Father, excuse me. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. God, we thank you for another day. We thank you for another opportunity to go forward in your glory. God, we thank you that we get to be with you always and even forever. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for the clarity that you're giving us in the place of our confusion. I thank you for the strength that you're replacing with, that you're, I thank you for the strength that you're putting in place of our weakness. God, I thank you that you are. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for showing us how to show up in this season. I pray that you meet every single person connected to this ministry right where they are, whatever time zone, whatever state, country, location, as long as they are connected to this ministry, which is connected to you. Father, meet them wherever they are and show them the light, the light that shines in the darkness, God, the light that reaches them wherever they are. Father, show them that light. Lord, today we put you on. As Romans 13 tells us, we put you on as we put on our shirt, as we put on our shoes, as we put on our socks and our undergarments. So we put you on, God. Yeah, that's true. Some things we don't know how to show up in. We're facing some things, God, that we don't know how to solve. Everybody gets excited about Friday as if Friday means that all my problems, all my pain goes away. There's nothing special about a Friday. In fact, if we live our lives constantly in your glory, every day can feel like what they consider Friday to be. So, Father, on this Friday, I pray that you strengthen your children as we put you on. That we'll have the wisdom that we need. That we have the focus that we need. That we'll have the strategy that we need to make it to Saturday. And, oh, God, meet us on Saturday. And then Sunday, oh, God, meet us on Sunday. But as of right now, God, we put tomorrow in your hands. I pray that you show us how to let go of yesterday, that we might be fully available for what it is that you're doing, what it is that you're trying to do, what it is that you're going to do in our lives today. Father, I pray for a today blessing over your people. I pray for a today type of anointing over your people, a today, 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 today. God, do it today. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, as we go into this moment, purposed and predestined by you, though it be, God, I ask that you give us the grace to receive your word. Let our hearts and minds be clear. Let us walk away better than how we stepped into this. Let us walk away powerful, purposeful, and ready to walk in a posture of precision. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Somebody say, God is good if you're with me. God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. And you know, that's true. That's a real thing. People get so excited about Friday. Like Friday just cancels out everything that I went through Monday through Thursday. Why am I getting, why am I living my entire life? That, does that even make sense? Why would you live your entire life Friday to Friday? I get excited about Friday just because you have two days off. You get Saturday and you get Sunday. Then for some people, you don't even get Saturday off because you have to prepare for Sunday. And then some people, you get Saturday, but you don't get Sunday. So I'm living my life every seven days for, what, 48 hours of peace? And it's not even a full 48 hours. That doesn't make sense. It means I've got to get my place, my place. I've got to get to myself to a place where my entire life is enjoyable. Hear me clearly. Somebody said God is comforting me, if you're with me. God is comforting me. God is comforting me. God is comforting me. God is comforting me. It's something so powerful, and I even rested on that scripture this morning, about putting on the Lord Jesus. It's something powerful about taking him and putting him on every ounce of your body. It's something powerful about even understanding that he's something you have to put on every day. That I don't always wake up feeling powerful. That you're not always going to wake up feeling like you've got this thing. You're not going to always wake up feeling like that, that you can do this thing. That's why we speak this over ourselves every time we're in these moments. Because it's not that every single day that God allows you to live, you're going to feel like this. I think this might be the problem. Maybe. Something looks a little weird. That might have just did it. That's not how it is. It's that every day that I wake up, 
despite how you don't feel and do feel, despite where you're lacking and even the areas where you might be abundant, I'm yet still putting on the Lord Jesus. And when I go out into the world, what I couldn't do, I now can do, or I didn't feel like I could do it. It's no longer about my feelings, but it's about the fact that I've put him on and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You do understand that's where that came from. Somebody say, God is strengthening me if you're with me. God is strengthening me. God is strengthening me. God is strengthening me. Ryan, I don't need a God to do anything though. Well, Ryan, this isn't the life for you. Go about your way. Why come here when you can spend your time going there? Why waste your time? Go be happy. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's what that means. With man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You thought you were just zipping up your jacket. No, you were zipping up the Lord Jesus. And so the Bible tells us this. I want you to know that every single thing that you're going through is to show you how to get somebody else through that thing. I want to say it better, but bear with me. Somebody say, he's teaching me. Or you can say, I'm learning. He's teaching me. I'm learning. He's teaching me. I'm learning. I'm learning. He's teaching me. Whichever one. He's teaching me. Okay. I'm learning. I see you, Joe. I see you, love, Brittany. He's teaching me. I'm learning. It's so interesting to see who chooses what when I give options. I'll be watching. Everything that you're going through is a lesson. So when we come to this place of finally realizing, <clears throat> settling ourselves on and fully believing in the fact that God is taking us somewhere, hear me clearly. There's this quote. I said I was going to stop saying it's a quote because once you give credit the first time, you can take ownership over it. And so the quote, but, but I've been quoting it yet still. The quote says, if you're going through hell right now, don't stop here. Who wants to stay in hell? When you really solidify your thinking on the fact that God is taking you somewhere, you begin to understand that my current situation, my today, is only preparing me for my tomorrow. That what I'm going through right now is only setting me up for what I'm going to end up going through next. So no matter the suffering that I experience, no matter the situation that I find myself in, no matter my current circumstance, when I really believe that God is taking me somewhere, when I really believe that my presence and sufferings cannot be compared to the glory that God is going to reveal in my life, I start to look at things differently. I start to understand that every single thing that I'm going through is to teach me. It's not to torment me. It's to develop me, not destroy me. It's to build me, not to break me. Somebody say, God is building me. God is building me. God is building me. You can say, I'm being built. I'm being built. I'm being built. I'm being built. It's good to see you, Pastor Edwards. I'm being built. I'm being built. I'm being built. I'm being built. That's a perspective shift. Yeah. So as we have now arrived at Friday, I want you to go all the way back to Monday and everything that you tried to ignore and everything that you tried to look past and discount because you thought it was destroying you. I want you to go back and grab every lesson because that's the only way the next week's going to be better. I like that. The only way the next week is going to be better for you is if you get every single lesson that this week has been trying to give you. Now, you said you're learning, but my question is, are you actually learning? <laughs> are you actually learning? Or are you just saying that because I told you to say that? I mean, can you actually look back over this entire week and point out the things that you've learned? I say this all the time. When Paul said, I'm forgetting what's behind me, in order for him to be strategic about what he was forgetting, he had to have analyzed that thing. I've got to look back over the good, over the bad, decipher between the two, cut them in half, take what's going to help me, get rid of what's going to hurt me, to move forward effectively in what God has for me. Everything God is doing in your life is to build you. Robin, how do you know? Because 2 Corinthians chapter 1 tells us this. Verse 3, praise be to God, to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all compassion and the God of all comfort. One more time if you're with me. Somebody say, God is comforting me. Somebody say, God is comforting me. God is comforting me. God is comforting me. God is comforting me. 
You know how you stop responding and everybody thinks something's wrong with you? Baby, there's nothing wrong with me. It's just the fact that God is comforting me. I thought that I needed people in this season. I came to find out that purpose would be enough for me in this season because God always gives provision for the purpose. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's good by itself. The Father of compassion and the God of all comfort who is with us, who stands with us, who makes ways for us out of no way, who provides for us, who shows up for us, who lifts us, who comforts us in all of our troubles, that we might know how to comfort somebody else, who sets us free from every snare, that I might have the strategy to set somebody else free, who teaches me how to survive the temptation, that I might teach somebody else how to do it, who comforts us in all of our troubles. Do you understand that God is with you? Somebody said God is with me. I feel like I told you to say that already, but I just want to remind you in case you forget. God is with you in every single thing that you're going through, are going to go through, and have gone through. See, 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 where is it in the Bible? Where is it in the Bible? Where is it in the Bible? Let's go here. Uh, let's just go down a little bit. Can I Bible hop? If you're with me, just follow me. I'll take you somewhere. You got to follow me to get there, but we're going somewhere. Verse nine. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril and he will deliver us again. Sometimes we get so caught up in how we expect God to look how we expect God to show up. We start worshiping our own will. We fall into our own false ideology and we end up missing God because God is bigger than us. The Bible would say just as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are his thoughts above our thoughts and his ways above our ways. So God can be standing right in front of you and you're gonna say, what is this shadowy creature? I'm scared and I'm afraid. But when you really are in a posture of knowing God, Somebody say, I know who he is if you're with me. You'll be, out of everybody else, the one person like Peter who says, hold on, wait a minute. I feel like I might know who this person is. It might look different. It might seem different. But because I know who he is, I'm able to recognize him however he shows up. Now, you have to understand at this point in the Bible, 2 Corinthians, Paul is writing to the church of Corinth. This comes, of course, after Romans. This is after Acts. Paul has been doing this for a little while. So the perspective he had when he first started ministry is not the same perspective that he has now. If you read the book of Acts, you'll come to find out that when Paul stepped into ministry, he stepped into storms. He was imprisoned. He was taken into being a slave. He was on ships. He was shipwrecked. And all of this chaos started happening. But the perspective he had in Acts, though it was powerful yet still painful, is a little bit different than the perspective he had in 2 Corinthians. In 2 Corinthians, Paul is trying to teach us that what you think might be random is actually calculated by God. Now, I tell you this all the time that you might have peace in everything that you're going through, but I want to give it to you from a different perspective that everything that you're going through is your playbook for your next season. Somebody say God has prepared me if you're with me. Everything that you're experiencing right now is your playbook for your next season. What you're operating in right now, I got to say this better. 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 What you're operating in right now is the playbook that your last season gave you. But what you're getting right now is the playbook for your next season. What, how you've been walking with God, what you've experienced with God, what you've learned from God, uh, 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 the moments where you were crying and you came to find out that there was purpose in the pain that you were experiencing. That revelation is what's fueling you right now. But God is also giving you a fresh revelation for now that is going to fuel you in your next. So the Bible says, do not look at what you see right now, because what you see right now will contradict what it is that you're believing God for. Because what's happening in your life right now is not for today. It's yet for your tomorrow. So then my question becomes, what battle are you facing? My question becomes, where are you torn into two pieces? My question becomes, what is your apprehension? I know the answer, but I want you to tell me, 
What's holding you back in this season? Do you know? Are you willing to share? What's stopping you? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Fear. Myself. Thinking about last year. Okay, we're going to come back to this. Is this beautiful but complicated thing that you have inside your head? It is this complex organism that is existing inside your head. This flesh, though it operates in the spiritual and the psychological, it's still carnal. It's this brain of yours. The Bible boldly tells us that the only reason that we are torn into two, the only reason that we struggle, truth be told, I know you dropped all of these different things, but they all go right back to what causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? Aren't you just at war with yourself? <laughs> Paul said, I've come to understand that every single thing that I'm going through in life is God teaching me how to be him. You do understand that purpose is not a small thing, right? See, a lot of people only read the Bible from a limited perspective, a finite perspective. The Bible is infinite. You can't just read the Bible and understand the Bible. You have to read the Bible, worship in the Bible. The Holy Spirit has to reveal the Bible to you. The Bible is a lot deeper, a lot bigger, and a lot wider than people make it. You do understand that your only assignment is to become God in the earth. You can't handle that. You can't handle that. You, can ha you can't handle that. So people get mad about the conversations that say you need to submit to God, submit to God, submit to God. People get mad about those conversations, but you do understand that is your only job, right? is to be a representative of God in the earth, to look like God, to talk like God, to walk like God. That's what it's all about. So understand this. When the devil comes after you, the devil is only coming after you to stop Christ from expanding in the earth because he only expands through you. Bible, we have this treasure in an earthen vessel that the excellence of the power may be of him and not of us. We have the glory of God resting down on the inside of us. So the only way for heaven to expand on earth is by us waking up every single day, choosing to go out and establish something. Somebody say, I'm being established if you're with me. I'm being established. I'm being established. I'm being established. So going back to Romans chapter 13, put ye on the Lord Jesus. I come to understand that it's not about us. I've been talking about that all this week, that it really has nothing to do with you. It's about him. You're not that important. Can I remind you on this Friday? I want to give you peace, but I also want to give you power. Here's your peace. You're not that important. You really don't matter. It's Christ that matters. So when you put you on the Lord Jesus every single day, hell starts coming after you because of what you have on. It's not you. It's what's in you. So the war is never about what's natural. It's about what's supernatural. You've got to bring your mind into the solid place, a solid place, solid. You've got to stabilize yourself in that understanding. So you can be like Paul and say, I understand that everything that I'm going through is so that God can teach me how to be him. <laughs> that was good to me if it wasn't good for you. The father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God that comforts us in all of our troubles. The God of all comfort. There's nothing that can separate us from his love, no matter the situation or circumstance. He's yet still the same God who's comforting us in that thing. So that somebody said I wasn't preaching the Bible, but I'm reading the Bible so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. First, second Corinthians chapter one. So what God does to me, how God treats me, how God shows up for you, how God provides for you, how God makes ways out of no ways, how God is selfless concerning you is how you're supposed to show up for other people. 
There was one time, mm. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say I'm going to lay on the floor. I'm going to lay on the floor. Verse 5. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. Do you still want to be like Jesus? Or has that died away? Does anybody still want to be like Jesus? I mean, I know we're in a dying world. I know times are different. I know it's only getting worse. But is there anybody who yet still wants to be like Jesus? Is there anybody who wakes up yet still saying, Lord, I want to be more like you. Lord, I want to see more like you. God, change me till I'm just like you. I, I want less of me and more of you. Do people still pray those prayers or am I the only one? That God, crucify my flesh. Father, if you can deliver me from myself, I'll take that deliverance. Do people still pray those type of prayers anymore? That's what Paul is saying. We suffer just that we might be like him. Because you thought that being like Jesus was gumdrops, candy canes, and rainbows. You didn't read your Bible. The gospel is not gumdrops, candy canes, and rainbows. For him, it is for us. Paul will go on to say, we might be in that text. We might not go to that text. I was reading that text, though. He says, everything that I do gives life to you. <laughs> Yet everything that I'm doing brings death to me. If you read the Gospels, everything Jesus did was death unto himself, but life to us. Walking in purpose is seldom beneficial to person. This is the shift that takes place between leaders and followers, because walking in purpose is about you really deciding that other people matter more. I've got to say that better. Walking in purpose is about you making the solid decision to say, I'm going to get rid of me and I'm going to focus on saving the rest. We're comforted in our sufferings by God. There's somebody else who can't handle it. Somebody say I'm focused if you're with me. Somebody say I'm focused. There's somebody else who's suffering, not connected to him, who can't handle it. We will be that to them. Everything that you're going through is to lift you higher into the glory of God. We are spirits possessing a soul, living in a body. We're having a natural experience, but a supernatural life. I could wish that it was all simple. Maybe warfare wouldn't be as necessary. Maybe trials and tribulations wouldn't be as beneficial if we just had a simple life, but life is complex and complicated. I'm going to leave that on the floor for now. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. Somebody say, I'm not alone. I haven't reminded you this in a while. Somebody say, I'm not alone, I'm not alone, I'm not alone. <clears throat> I'm not alone. Again, you're not following what I'm saying. Do you understand God is testing you every single moment of every single day? This is even a test. Every single person responding to a negative comment, you're failing the test. The test is, can you focus in the midst of the distractions? Not can you focus in the absence of the distractions. Everybody can focus when there's no distractions. Only those who are really responsible, only those God can really trust, know how to focus in the midst of distractions. Do you think this is a coincidence? No. God is yet teaching you how to focus in the distraction. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, you don't think you're going to drown. You're like, I know the God who let me walk on the water. So when the winds are blowing and the waves are roaring, you'll still be able to walk to Jesus despite every distraction that's trying to stop you. So you said you were focused, but you just proved that you're not. <clears throat> now you're just making me switch my text. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? Aren't you the only thing standing in your own way? You desire to have it, but you don't have it. So you get mad at what you don't have that you could have, but you're just at war with yourself. So you don't have. You desire, but you don't have, so you kill. You hate on everybody else. You talk about everybody else. You covet, but you can't get what you're coveting for. 
So you quarrel and you fight. You talk about what he got and what she got, but you can have it too. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you don't receive because you ask amiss. You ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your own pleasures, that you may be selfish with what you're asking for. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Who are you connecting with? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Somebody say, I'm a friend of God if you're with me. I'm a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. We're in James chapter 4. We're in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. James chapter 4 and 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Now, see, I really be setting y'all up sometimes because saying that you're a friend of God means that you're walking in maturity. <laughs> I'm sorry, I be setting y'all up. Maybe I shouldn't set you up like that because I'm putting you on the chopping block. Jesus did not call the disciples his friends until they were mature enough. Jesus did not call the disciples his friends until they had come to his level of faith. I no longer call you servants, but friends, for a servant doesn't know what their master is doing. So when you say I'm a friend of God, it means that I'm going to stop being at war with myself. I'm going to stop fighting myself. I'm going to, we're not even there yet. You adulterous people. Don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? I'm going somewhere. I'm just giving you the whole text. Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, I love Jesus. I love Jesus because he says this. He says, listen, <laughs> you've only got two options. <laughs> you're either with me or against me. <laughs> and if you're not for me, you're against me. If they've got one foot in and one foot out, why are they still connected to you? That's free lunch. I'm just going to give you free lunch real quick. Everybody who has free lunch, go to this line. Everyone who can pay for their lunch, go to that line. I'm looking for people who want the free lunch. If they've got one foot in and one foot out, if they're 50%, why, 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 why keep them close to you? Why keep undecided people, situation, things around you? Why keep unbalanced things around you? You support me on Monday, but on Tuesday, you're going against me. Wednesday, you hate me. Thursday, you're trying to come back around the bend. Why keep unbalanced people around you? Lukewarm, yeah, but we're not going to focus on that. Because when people hear that word, they take it to one specific place. When lukewarm just speaks to you being in one day, out the other day. Why? Why only deal with someone who calls you after 10 p.m.? Why only deal with someone that won't see you in the daytime? I remember... Mm, I was, mm, 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 mm. you adulterous people. Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has called to dwell in us? Do you understand that God, yearn, move along. Do you understand that God yearns for what he put on the inside of you? <laughs> When the Bible speaks to God being jealous, it's not jealousy as we experience jealousy. Jealousy like, uh, why are you talking to them? Jealousy like, it's not that. It's jealousy meaning I just want you to myself. I'm yearning for the price that I paid for you. I'm yearning for the body that I've saved. I'm yearning to spend more time with you. I'm, mourning to, I'm yearning to have a closer relationship with you. I'm yearning to see the glory I placed in you released in all the world. This is what the Bible is saying. He yearns for the spirit that he's caused to dwell in us, jealously longs. But he gives us more grace. Somebody say, I'm grace for this if you're with me. <clears throat> I'm grace for this. I'm grace for this. But God continues to give us more grace. But God continues to give us more, 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 more. Having not even used what we have, God gives us more. That's the grace of God. That is why the scripture says God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Now we're getting to my point. My point is this, verse 7. Are you submitted to God? You think submitting to God is just about sin and salvation when that's not even your business. You do understand that, right? I know they've been preaching the gospel a little bit wrong and that was only to manipulate people to stay at their church. 
Sin and salvation aren't your business. That's his business. So when it speaks to submitting to God, it's not talking about your sin and your salvation. <laughs> it's saying, have you allowed God to flow in your business? You got saved. That was his job. Okay. Have you given him yourself in that saving? Sin, salvation, all of that is his business because the flesh is sinful and I can't go against that thing. Only his spirit equips me to go against that thing. So have you, when it says submitted yourselves then to God, have you submitted to the purpose of God in your life? Have you submitted to what's required of you in that purpose? See, people preach the gospel to put people down when the gospel is what lifts people up. So when it speaks to submission, it's saying, have you come to understand that everything that you're going through, though painful, is actually purposeful? Have you submitted to God? I want to go out and have fun. I know, but you've got a business to run and my glory is trying to be released through this business. So have you submitted to God in that thing? I'm tired of doing this every single day. I know, but my glory is being released in this thing every single day. So are you going to shut down what my glory is using or are you going to submit to me? Paul is talking about, if we go back to 2 Corinthians, where's my sticky note? Right here, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, my bad. He goes on to say this. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experienced in the province of Asia. Paul is not talking about sinner salvation. He's talking about what comes along with purpose. He's talking about everything that you've got to go through to get to everything that God has for you. He's talking about the fact that I do have a responsibility to stay in a specific posture concerning the purpose that God has placed on my life. So when you do pray for purpose, you are also praying for restriction. When you do pray for purpose, you are also praying for another level of responsibility. When you do pray for purpose, it's like people who say, I can't hang out with them. They ain't got nothing to lose. You can't connect with everybody when you have something to lose. When you pray for purpose, he says, I don't want you to think that this is easy. I don't want you to think that this is going to be a skip in the park, a walk in the park, a jog in the park, whatever they call it nowadays. About the troubles we experience in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure. You're not hearing the text clearly. Let me make it clear. He said, we went through things that there was no way we could have gotten ourselves out of. He said, I was in a situation and I was in a circumstance so far deep beneath the earth, I couldn't even see the sun. This is what he's saying. We went through pressure. Pressure, pressure. I feel like life is pushing me down. Pressure. I feel like I'm being squoze. Pressure. We went through pressure far beyond our ability to even endure it. You're not hearing what the text is saying. He's saying we could not last through what we were going through. The very fact that I'm writing this book today, the very fact that you're on this live stream now is proof that God has been with you because you've been through some things that would have taken you completely out. You think you were just strong enough to handle it. You say, I'm all this and all that. No, you don't understand that somebody else went through the same thing and they're dead. You don't understand that somebody else went through the same thing and they're in the psych ward. You don't understand that somebody else went through the same thing and they, God has yet been with you. Paul is saying, we went through stuff that there's no way we could have survived. So that we despaired of life itself. Y'all don't be hearing the Bible. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. I want to talk to people who feel like they're suffering. I want to talk to people who feel like they're struggling. I want to talk to people who feel like they are suffocating. Somebody said they shouldn't be here. You do know you have to click on this live stream to make that comment, right? <laughs> do you see how people try to speak against Christ but want him so bad that you'll enter into this moment because there's something inside of you that wants it, though the outside of you doesn't? <laughs> Somebody say God is good if you're with me God is good, God is good, God is good, God is good If you're with me I gotta make sure you're with me now I don't wanna just be walking I don't wanna just be going uh, God is good, God is good, God is good, God is good, God is good Alright, let's move 
so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death. You got to hear what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, I felt like I was dying. I felt like I wasn't going to make it through. I felt like there was a noose wrapped around my neck and we weren't going to make it out that thing. And truth be told, we weren't going to make it out that thing. But I came to find that God only was allowing me to go through this thing that I can teach somebody else how to get through this thing. Bible. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. Do you understand that God is just trying to put you into a posture of relying on him? That's good to me if it wasn't good for you. God is just trying to get you to the point that you recognize that you can't do it by yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're not understanding. God is going to keep raising the heat on your life until you finally say, I can't do it. He's okay. That's all it's about. Lucifer didn't have that understanding. And so him and all these angels fell from heaven. So now in order to keep us with him, God allows us to experience what it's like without him, just so you can get to the point of recognizing and realizing that there is no way that I'll be able to survive this if God doesn't get me through this. So then you stop relying on your own strength. You stop relying on your own resources. You stop relying on your own abilities. You stop saying what's possible and what's not possible. And you start saying with God, all things are possible. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Because God is just trying to get you to the place that you might rely on him to be God who raises the dead. You do understand that sometimes God allows you to get low, that he can get all the glory in lifting you up high again, right? You do understand that sometimes God lets you die, lay in the tomb for three days just so he can get the glory out of your resurrection. Hallelujah. You do know sometimes God does let your bones dry out just so that he can prove that I can speak to a dry thing. I can speak to a dead thing and command it to live again. You do understand that we serve the God of glory, right? You do understand that that is the God that we serve, that he does all things, all things, all things that all might come to believe. That it's not just about you and everything going how you thought it would go, how you wished and hoped it would go, but going in a way that will cause other people to believe in God. You think it's just about you being put on the stage, not understanding that you're only on the stage to glorify God. One thing that I love about Nicki Minaj, you can hate her all you want to, is she absolutely does glorify God when she's on that stage, huh? You can talk about her, you can think all these different things, but you don't actually listen to what she says. She glorifies him every chance that she gets. She just understands her audience. So she preaches the gospel without quoting the scripture. Huh? There's videos online right now of her at her last show talking about if God before you who can be against you. <laughs> you think God is going to put you on a mega stage for you to not glorify his name? Oh, but you think everyone who preaches, I'm going to make it specific to you. You think she has her own God. Now I'm speaking to you. You think that being a representation of Christ has to only look one way. And that's why you're at war within yourself. Because you think that God being represented in the earth has to only look one way. Did Peter look like Paul? Did James look like John? That's not even biblical. Everybody looked different. So Galatians would tell us that when Paul received the gospel to the Gentiles, Paul did not go back to Jerusalem with the other disciples because they would have rejected him because he looked a little bit different. Not understanding that how he looked, which was different from them, is what gave him power. Somebody say I'm powerful. Yeah, you can talk to me when I come up out the word, baby. I know my Bible. That's what made Paul powerful was his differences, was his uniqueness, was the fact that he had the same faith, but had the ability to express it a different way. Huh? What causes fights and quarrels among you? Because so many people don't believe that they're enough right now. You believe that you've got to hop, skip, and jump and do all of these things. Turn yourself around three times for God's glory to be revealed in your life. For God to use you. For God to dwell on the inside of you. Not understanding that God chose you because of who you are. You do understand the only reason Paul could write the book of Romans was because he was the only Roman citizen. He was the only one. So had Paul spent his entire life trying to be like Peter, we would not have the bulk of the New Testament. We would not have the book of Romans. I'm not for everybody. 
but I am for the people that I'm for. And for the people that I'm for, if you're with me, somebody say I'm chosen. If I'm chosen, I'm chosen. If you're with me, I'm not for everybody and I'm never trying to be for everybody. Somebody say I'm chosen, I'm chosen, I'm chosen, I'm chosen. You don't understand that because you're talking lacking understanding. But baby, I've worshiped in this word and Paul wrote the bulk of the New Testament because he could reach the people that the gospel was for. <laughs> so God has a people assigned to you that everybody else can't reach. You've just got to be stable in believing that you're enough right now, not because of you, but because every day you put on the Lord Jesus, every place that's lacking becomes abundant. Every place that's low is lifted up high when you put on the Lord Jesus. Bible, wrong sticky. But this all happened that we might not rely on ourselves, huh? <laughs> Everything that takes place in your life is God trying to pull you out of being confident in yourself and put you into being confident in him. So as painful as it may be, there will be some situations that you find yourself in where you're going to do everything that you can to get up out of it and you're going to still find yourself stuck. As painful and frustrating as it may be in that moment, you are going to find yourself in some pits that you can't get yourself out of. If you read the Bible, did David say, even through the valley of the shadow of death, I don't have to fear evil because I'm the most, most powerful man in the country or something like that? No. He said, because God is with me. Didn't the Bible say, I'll give you the treasures of darkness, hidden riches and secret places that you may know that I, the Lord who call you by your name, am the God of Israel? I thought that's what the Bible said, that it was all about God trying to show you that as long as I'm with you, everything will be all right. One more time, somebody say, God is with me if you're with me. God is with me. God is with me. God is with me. So sometimes God lets you go through things just so that you can understand that he's greater. Bible. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. This is good. God, give me the language. So then once God convinces you that relying on him is all you need to do, you can go out into the world and you can be the pillar that people can rely on. Is that good? Is that good? Is that good? Did I say it good? I got to say it better. I got to say it better. The faith that you have concerning God, how you look up to him for your strength, how you look up to him for your breakthrough, for your deliverance, to make ways out of no ways. It's a flow. I'm looking at God. And when I have a solid understanding about who God is, it shows me how to be. And it shows me how to have a solid understanding about who I am. And then this process continues. And then when I'm taking out the picture, the person that was looking up to me starts looking up to him. Do you understand that's the procession? Moses, God, Joshua. Moses is taking out the picture. Joshua, God. But it is a continuous cycle of looking up to God. God's at the top. Then is his man or his woman. Then are the people following this man or woman of God. Somebody say, I'm a leader if you're with me. I'm only talking to the leaders. I'm not talking to the followers. It's going to go over your head if you're a follower. If you're a leader, I'm talking to you. That everything that you're going through is to teach you how to be God to the people connected to you. Robin, that's not the Bible. Did God not tell Joshua, you will be God to the people? I mean, Moses, you will be God to the people. And to me, you will represent the people. God said, to me, you are the people. But to the people, you are me. Our assignment as disciples, our assignment as people sent by God is to be him in the earth. But to him, we are the people. So when people hear that, they think this. When people hear that, they think that we're trying to go above God. No, I clearly said, to God, we are the people. But to the people, we are him. You said something about don't follow a leader not submitted to the Lord. Exactly. Now, the Bible is telling us this. Who comforts us 
in everything, that we might learn, that we might grow, that we might be developed into being a better leader. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort. He's saying that everything that's taking place in your life, I'm going to say it to you. The Bible is saying this. Everything that's taking place in your life is for the benefit of the people connected to you. That's what it's all about. That's how God can trust you. That's how God knows that you're ready. Do you actually understand who you are? Somebody say, I know who I am if you're yet still with me. Or, am I making sense? Somebody say, I know who I am. Do you know who you are? I mean, do you still wake up acting like you're not who you are? Or do you know who you are yet? I mean, do you know an ounce of who you are? Uh, we know not what we shall be. I don't know the fullness of who I am, but do you know who you are at least a little bit? An ounce? I mean, I'm at the point now where I'm waking up and I'll be buttoning my shirt and I'll say, Lord Jesus, why? Why am I here? What am I doing? But I'm just going to go ahead because I do know I got this. Like, do you know who you are a little bit? <laughs> if you know who you are, then you should know that you've got to stay submitted. See, everybody talks about you know, I'm going to leave this here. We're going to come back, actually. This happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but God who raises the dead. Everybody talks about, you know, doing better. Everybody talks about being better. Everyone reduces the gospel down to our behaviors and minimizes its potency concerning our thought processes, right? And so a lot of people aren't graced to do the surgery on the psyche and can only reach the physical and there's no saving, there's no deliverance in the physical. Um, it happens in the psyche, the soul realm, psychology, and then it goes up into the spiritual. The Bible says resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Resist him and he'll flee from you. So no matter the temptation he throws at you, don't pay attention to it. No matter what, what's going on in your life, don't pay attention to it. No matter if he's dangling candy in your face, say no to it. But I don't know any baby who's going to say no to somebody dangling candy in front of their face. So the Bible tells us clearly in James chapter 4 verse 7, submit yourselves then to God. Somebody say, I'm submitted. And I'm going to tell you why that's powerful and why that's necessary. Submit yourselves then to God. Can I go up to my new king? <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 10. <laughs> Therefore, let him who thinks he stands Take heed unless he fall. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who would not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. But the only way for me to recognize my path of freedom is by being submitted. If you think you're standing, be careful that you don't fall. That's what submission is for. Resist the devil. Submit to God is the first step. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And I'll be able to continue standing. So what happens is this. We succeed in life. Somebody say I'm successful if you're with me. I'm successful. I'm successful. I'm successful. We succeed in life. We have wins and we have accomplishments in life, right? We have victories in life. We have victories, victories, victories. Somebody say, I've got the victory if you're with me. I've got the victory. I've got to make sure you're with me now. I've got the victory. Mm -hmm. I've got the victory. I've got the victory. We get so excited about the victory. We get so excited about being victorious that we start skipping. We stop submitting. We're like, okay, I worked my way here now. 
This is what happened with the Israelites. They got into the promised land. They were like, we sacrificed everything we could. We were manipulative in our behaviors to try to convince God to give us what he had for us all along. And so we tried to act like we were really down for real. But when we got what we were waiting on, we switched up on them. All of us are like that in some type of way. We get what we've been praying for. And now we're switching up on God, not remembering what got us that thing in the first place was the posture that we were in. So if you think it's gotten good for you, stay in the posture that led to it being good. If you think that you're in a season of expansion, somebody say I'm expanding. Stay in the posture that led to your expansion. If you believe that you're increasing, stay in the posture that led to your increasing by submitting to God. Now, submitting to God is complicated when I'm in something that doesn't feel good. Submitting to God is complicated when I'm in something that doesn't seem favorable. Submitting to God is complicated when it's completely in opposition to what I want to do. But it's not submitting, 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 reducing myself to the mission, submission, submitting to the mission. I'm saying, God, the mission is more important. Now, see, there are two types of people. There are the people that just want to chill and relax. I want a big house on the hill. I want my reparations. And that's good for you. But there are a people who say, God, if you're going to use anybody in the earth, I want it to be me. I don't know about you. I don't want to look out my window and see people going up to battle while I'm sitting behind. I don't want to look out my window and see people going after something while I'm just chilling, going after nothing. There are two types of people. Submitting to God is hard until you say, you know what, God, the mission is more important. Yeah, I'd rather go to sleep, but I've got to finish working on this business because the mission is more important. I'm facing a lot of obstacles and expanding my company, but I'm not going to quit because the mission is more important. Bible, no temptation has overtaken you except that which is common to man. Everybody is going through something. And the some things that we are going through are connected because all of us are in the purpose of God. Somebody say, I have purpose. I said this the other day. No purpose is isolated. I have purpose if you're with me. I have purpose, I have purpose, I have purpose. No purpose is isolated. When you don't wake up and be who God has created you to be, I can't accomplish my mission. When I don't wake up being who God has called and created me to be, you can't accomplish your mission because we go together real bad as God's purpose is unfolded. Purpose is not an isolated thing. Purpose is connected. Read the Bible. Tell me where the Bible contradicts itself. Tell me where purpose contradicts itself. Genesis to Revelation. Find one contradiction, please. I'll give you two seconds. You're not going to find it because purpose is always interconnected, intertwined. It's always an agreement. It always goes together. So you're not alone in what you're going through. You've just got to understand this purpose is connected, but it's expression. The expression of purpose is individual. So my story is not your story. Your story is not my story, but all of our stories are going together for the book of life. Our names are written in the book of life. It's one book, right? Submit to God, submitting to the mission of God. Do, are you hearing the perspective shift that must take place? Where is your perspective? Because if you really understand that you have a mission, I'm in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm also in James chapter 4 and I'm in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, I do believe. When you understand that God has sent you on a mission, somebody say, I'm on a mission, if you're with me. Oh, I hope this, I hope you're getting this. Somebody say, I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission, 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 I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission. Don't call my phone. Don't get mad when I didn't answer. I'm on a mission. I had somebody call my phone last night. I said, what you calling my phone for? I'm on a mission. Apparently your life is falling apart. So what you calling me for? I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission. I ain't got time to step out of my mission or step into your mission because your mission ain't my mission. I got my own mission. I'm busy. I see you life in Madison. If you're getting something good out of this, let me just check the temperature. Somebody say God is good. If I'm in the room somewhere, 
If it's making some type of sense, somebody say God is good. If I'm not on the ball, if I've lost my mind, if I need to go and pray again, if my prayers weren't good enough, if I didn't worship my way into a revelation, let me know if I'm off the ball. If I've gone crazy, I'm all right with being told I'm crazy now. All right. <laughs> You're on a mission. I used to play video games. In fact, I could see myself getting an Xbox one day, but it'll distract me too much. I like shooting games. I like GTA. So baby, probably when the next GTA gets released, I'm for sure gonna grab that. So baby, we gotta get all this work out the way because I'm gonna spend a good seven days beating that game, all right? I used to play video games. And there was no mission that I ever played where I didn't have an enemy come after me. I'm talking about when I was a child, I used to go over to my best friend's house. His name was Amari, and he had a, his brother had an Xbox. And we would play his brother's Xbox, and we would play Lego Star Wars. And I don't remember any mission that I set out to do that didn't have an enemy. I like action movies. I don't like love stories. I don't like songs about relationships. I like songs about getting money, and I like songs about Jesus. Uh, those are my only two songs I like, all right? Shout out to Bryson Tiller and his new album. You can hate me if you want to. I'm going to listen to it when I work out today. I like action movies. I like Marvel movies. And there's no Marvel movie that I've ever watched where they went out on a mission and did not have an enemy try to stop them from accomplishing it. See, you have to understand, when you say I'm on a mission, if you really believe, recognize, realize that you're on a mission, you should expect an enemy to try to stop you from completing it. I'm on a mission, huh? We're on a mission field. Or did you forget? They call them missionaries for a reason. They call apostles missionaries, depending on the denomination of religion that you find yourself in. It's either a missionary or an apostle. Both of them have been set on a mission. It's the same thing. We are on a mission field. So I should expect an attack. I should expect an adversary. So Bible says, if you are standing, be careful that you don't fall because you do have an enemy that's trying to stop you from completing the mission. But lo and behold, if you submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, he will flee from you. Then you will have the strategy for how to set somebody else free. Do you know a lot of people spend so much time in prayer asking God to show me, show me, show me, God, how do I get out? How do I figure it out? The strategy is in your everyday life. Bible. Can we go back here? He has delivered us from such a deadly peril. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. And he will deliver us again. Paul said, God did it before. Many times over. Again, we're in the book of Corinthians. Paul has made it through Acts. Paul has made it through Romans. We are now in Corinthians. He delivered us before. He will deliver us again. Therefore, I'm submitting to God and what I'm going through right now. See, this is how the Bible goes together. On him, we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us. I'm submitting myself to God, resisting the devil that wants to convince me that everything that I'm going through is not developing me for my destiny. Eventually, he's going to flee from me and we glory in every tribulation. Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, perseverance, character and character, hope. Now, hope doesn't disappoint because now I believe that God will meet me anywhere. Now, I believe that God is covering me now that I believe that now I believe that God is comforting me. Now, I really believe that God is for me. How do you know that God is for you if you've never been in a situation where he could have been against you? How do you know God is for you if you've never find yourself in a situation or circumstance where you could have been separated from him? How do you know that everything comes together if you don't ever go through something where it looks like it's falling apart? Lo and behold, you look back over your life. Do you know I don't even remember half of the bad stuff I went through? Like there's sometimes God will bring it to my mind and I remember, oh, dang, I did go through that. Oh, wow, I really did survive that and I apply what I've been through to what I'm going through, that's what this text is about. Applying what you've been through 
to what you're going through, number one. Number two, what you're going through is teaching you how to be God to somebody else, to the people connected you, to you. And number three, is just trying to put you into the place of saying, God, I can't do this without you. It's just trying to get you to the place of saying, I need you to stand with me. So then when you walk in a room, you're not walking into a room feeling like you're by yourself. You're walking into a room knowing that God is with you. I mean, I'm talking about for sure God is with me. I mean, I know God might be with you too, but even if he wasn't with you, I know he's with me. That's the type of posture God is trying to put you in, that you know that he's with you no matter what. I'm giving you this and then we're going to go. Submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to God to you. Wash your hands, purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, well, change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. What I love most about Paul is Paul didn't have to do anything concerning his life. I mean, surely he had to go through terrible situations and circumstances and lo and behold God gets somebody else to do it I ain't trying to live the life of Paul all right I'm anointed but God I, I've got my own oil I don't want that oil now yet God made every single way for Paul in fact at one point Paul said this do we not as ministers of the gospel have the right to eat off the gospel that we preach yet we have not used this right that the gospel might not be stained in its approach so Paul said I've suffered having not required you to provide for me actually experiencing the provision of God and I'm not gonna let nobody take that away from me so I'm going to boast in the fact that when nobody else showed up for me, God was the one who showed up for me. Do you recognize and realize that God has only been trying to give you a revelation about who he is that everybody else doesn't have? You do know that if God allowed everybody else to show up for you, everybody else to help you, somebody else to set you free and deliver you, you'd be worshiping their feet. You'd be worshiping the ground that they walk on. You do realize that, right? You, you, you do realize that, right? If somebody else did it, all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise would go to them. And so you'd be one of those people who every time they get the mic, I want to thank this person right here because they did it all for me. Nah, baby, when I get the mic, I ain't thanking nobody but God. Don't expect me to mention your name not once because you didn't do a thing for me. Had it not been for the Lord who was by my side, I wouldn't be where I am today, huh? And so when I get the mic, the only thing that you're going to hear is me glorifying Jesus. I hope you're ready to testify in this season. I hope you're ready to tell the world how good God has been to you. Because when God lifts you up and exalts you, it's only that you might glorify him, that all might come to believe in who he is. So my question is, do you actually believe in who God is enough to trust? Trust him, even when you can't trace him. Paul said, I'm looking around at my situation and my circumstance and it looks terrible, but I dare believe that what I'm going through is only preparing me for what I'm headed to. And when you get to where you're going, you'll be able to say what Paul has said. You know what? God was always with me. God was always taking care of me. Yeah, see y'all read the Bible not understanding what it's really talking about. Y'all reading the Bible, not understanding what it's saying. These are people's lives that they lived. You think somebody sat in the library reading a bunch of books and wrote the Bible because of what they studied? Oh, you think we preach? Well, some people do do that. That's why they have the best sermons ever and they got these scripts for them. No, 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 baby. We preach what we live. That's what Paul said. We preach what we've seen, witnessed, and experienced in Christ Jesus. You not understanding. This was their life. They suffered. And so the faith that you receive, you're not getting it. You're not getting what the Bible is saying. You're not getting what the Bible is saying. He's saying Everything that I'm going through is death to myself, but it's life to you. We are reading life. And every time you read the word of God, you get life and that more abundantly. But these people experienced death 
Robin, what are you saying? I'm saying what you're going through right now might feel like death, but if you really are a leader and you really are mission focused, you'll go through whatever you've got to go through to give life to somebody else. Cause what's trying to kill you can't kill you, but it will kill them if you move out of your position. Somebody say, I'm in position if you're with me. You've got to be the one that stands in position because they can't handle it, but you can. Robin, I can't handle it. The very fact that you're watching me right now is proof that you can handle it because I don't speak to weak people. I can't stand weak people. I only speak to people who can handle it. I only speak to the people who've gone through the fire and you came out and you weren't burned. Rabbi Shaka, hallelujah. I don't speak to weak, fickle people. I can't handle it. I can't deal with it. I've been through too much to settle for excuses. I've been through too much to settle for what you couldn't do and everything, all these obstacles you place upon yourself. I started with nothing. So I don't care if you started with nothing. I don't want to hear excuses. I want to know how powerful you are. I want to know how big you believe, God. Then I want to know, are you willing to put that faith to work? So if you are connected to this ministry, you're a warrior. Somebody say, I'm a warrior. If you're connected to this ministry, you're a fighter. There are four things that have to be present for God to move in your life. You've got to be the right person in the right place at the right time with the right power. If you're with me, somebody say, I'm the right person. Alexa, turn off the thermostat. It's off. I'm in the right place. I'm in the right place. It's the right time. Hallelujah. It's the right time. It's the right time. It's the right time. It's the right time. Hallelujah. And I've got the right power. 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 Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow, I'm skipping and then we're going and we're leaving. We will go to this or that city. Spend a year here, a year there, carry on business and make money. This is why I don't like people asking me so many questions about tomorrow. Why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. I dare you to let go of tomorrow. I dare you to let go of tomorrow. I even dare you to let go of your yesterday. I dare you to be fully present in every single moment that today presents you with. I dare you to be present in every single moment that today presents you with. Today, 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 today. Tomorrow is not your business. Today is. You do understand that if you do not show up effective in today, you won't even get to your tomorrow. I gotta say that better. If you are not making the best decisions of today, your tomorrow will reflect that lack of decision making. That's Bible. So you have to focus on today. If you, I'll, I'll appease you. If you really do care about your tomorrow, focus on your today. If you really do care about it, don't worry about it. Don't focus on it. Focus on today. Because tomorrow is a reflection of today. So if you lay in bed all day today, you're going to be swamped tomorrow because of what you neglected today. So if you really do care about tomorrow, I'll appease you. Focus on today. Don't worry about tomorrow. You don't know what's going to happen. What is your life? You're not that important. Didn't I tell you that? You're not that important. You don't matter that much. It's God's purpose that validates you. It's God's purpose that increases your value. It's God's purpose. You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. <laughs> I got my peace when I recognized and realized that, baby, I'm just a mist. <laughs> I've been calling you. My life is falling apart, baby. I'm just a mist. <laughs> <laughs> if God has given me no power or purpose concerning this situation, I'm, I'm of no help to you. I'm sorry. You better call him. Don't call me. I'm just a mess. <laughs> I started sleeping peacefully. Instead, you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. 
Y'all thought it was just something the old folks would say. If the Lord be willing, no, nah, they were speaking what the word says. If the Lord be willing and the creek don't rise, hmm? As it is you boast in your arrogant schemes, all such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Pause for a minute, just back up with me. If I know what I should do and I don't do what I should do, you're telling me I'm in sin? Oh, wow. So you're telling me that the standard things that the church preaches on concerning sin is not the, that's not it. You're telling me the things that we focus on concerning sin, uh, I'm not gonna say that I worth our focus. I'm just saying that there's more to it. Wait, you mean to tell me that my lack of decision making can be sin too? Wait, you mean to tell me that if God is pushing me into one place, and I know that, and I choose to go to a different place, I am in sin? Oh. Sin is knowing the mission that's been placed before you and choosing to abandon that mission. A rogue agent? Rogue agent? I don't know the definition of rogue, but I know what a rogue agent is. If somebody has the definition. You can go ahead here. Uh, listen, I don't know, but I can find out, right? Praise God for Google. Might as well. Hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. An agent who operates inconsistent. It gave me rogue, mean, and slang. Dishonest or worthless person. There we go. I had to go to Marion Webster. Dishonest or worthless. Rogue agent, dishonest, worthless. You abandoned the mission. Have you abandoned God's mission concerning your life? Have you abandoned God's direction concerning your life? Have you abandoned that thing? We're going here and we're leaving now. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. Somebody say, God is comforting me if you're with me. I don't want you to answer the question. I just want you to think about it. Somebody say, God is with me if you're with me. I just want you to think. All comfort. Who comforts us in every trouble, all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Receive, receive, receive. Receive. It didn't just say are given from God. It says receive from God. I want you to receive God's comfort in this season. I, I want you to see, receive, receive God's comfort in this season of your life. Receiving. God can try to give it to you all day, but if you're not receiving what I'm giving you, see, that's like me giving advice, divine instruction to somebody over and over again. I keep planting the seeds, but they ain't producing no tree because you're not good ground. Good ground is when I receive what God is giving to me. And everybody wants to be good ground and make good decisions, and that's good too. I just told you to do that. But being good ground, receiving the seeds of God, is also receiving his comfort. It's also receiving his peace. Good ground doesn't switch up or doesn't change. If you're good ground, you're good ground. Somebody say I'm good ground. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And baby, I'm too mature at this level. I, I'm too mature. I was immature at one point where I used to want it more than people, but I am mature enough at this place in time to know, number one, my anointing. Know, number two, how God shows up. God has given you. I've given it all to you, baby. I, I do know that it works. I've worked it enough to know it works. You got to take it and use it, though. I can't move your arms and your feet for you. I wanted someone to move my arms and feet at one point too. I wish God would move my arms and feet. But no, you got to do that thing. Good ground doesn't shift. It doesn't change. You're either good ground or you're not. So when God is trying to give you seeds of comfort, you got to receive those just as you receive seeds that are blessings. You can't pick and choose when you want to be good ground. You can't pick and choose when. You, you got to be good ground then. So receive the comfort of God. Receive the peace of God. That's what submit to God means. That's good, but I got to leave that alone. That's good, but I got to leave that alone. That's what submit to God, resist the devil and he shall flee from you means. Submit to God. It means receive from God. 
It doesn't matter what situation or circumstance you're in, just submit to God. All of us in some capacity would love for our situations and circumstances to look different, be different. We would love to experience different. But sometimes God just builds you in that thing. The Israels hated the wilderness. The Israelites hated the wilderness. But the wilderness was preparing them for their promise. So until they submitted to their wilderness, they couldn't get into their promised land. Until you submit to your wilderness, until you submit to what you don't know, you're never going to get to the point of knowing. You can't be so in love with the promise that you start rejecting the process that's developing you for the promise. So what I told you is, what the Bible said, it came out of my mouth, but it came out of this book. Out of my mouth, it came through my eyes, out of my mouth. I just literally lifted the words off of the pages and gave them out of my mouth. Faith cometh by hearing, so I'm giving you what I read. It's right here. Who comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. I'm being prepared for the promise. God is preparing you for the promise. That's what the Bible is saying. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If you are going through stress, if you are going through tumultuous times, if you feel like you want to pull your hair out your head, it's not about you. It's for somebody else. So you can pick and choose who you want to be. But as for my, me and my house, you can pick and choose. But God does not just exalt people for nothing. That's what I want you to put in your head. I, that's got to be engrafted in you. God does not exalt people for nothing. God only exalts people he can trust with that exaltation. And if God can't trust you, he's not going to exalt you. If God can't trust you, he's not going to lift you. Have you not heard of Moses who could not enter into the promised land because God could not trust him? He said, speak to the rock. Moses hit the rock. Now the people wouldn't believe. Now the people are thinking that the only way to get water is for me to hit after it and to work for it. When there are some things that God will give you just because you spoke to them. God has to know he can trust you in that thing. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. Everything that you're going through is for what's connected to you. It's for something and somebody else. Abraham went through everything Abraham went through just for us. Jesus went through everything that he went through just for us. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort, which means you should count it honorable to go through what you're going. Somebody say it's an honor if you're with me. You should count it an honor to go through what you're going through. It should be honorable to you. Like, I, I hope that's your perspective. That's for sure mine. I had to grow to that place, but that's for sure mine. Everything that I go through, I know it's not about me. It's not for me. So number one, it makes me stop beating myself up thinking that I'm this horrible person. And I want you to stop doing that too. It means stop beating yourself up. Stop thinking you're this horrible person. Stop thinking that you just can't get it together and start thinking that no, God is using you as the example. Somebody say, I'm the example. That God is working all things at the counsel of his will. And the will is the delivering of his people. Bible, God is not slack concerning his promise, but is long suffering, but is patient that all might have the opportunity to come to repentance. You are the one who's saving a dying generation. You think it's just about making more money. Baby, money ain't going to go with you when you die. If it's just about money for you, go somewhere else. Baby, we're going to be wealthy. Somebody say, I'm wealthy. I'm wealthy. I'm wealthy. I'm wealthy. I'm wealthy. I believe God for three-dimensional increase. Increase me spiritually. Increase me psychologically. Increase me financially, physically, professionally. I believe him for all three levels of increase. But if it's just about money for you, you can go somewhere else with that because God only gives you profit on the level of your purpose. You're not talking to me. 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 So then when I got serious about my ministry and I said, God, I need more resources to do what it is that you placed on my heart to do. He said, I'll give you the profit that matches your purpose. But if you just want money to sit around, I ain't giving you no, you no money for that. Didn't the Bible just say 
You have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you ask amiss with wrong motives that you may spend it on your own pleasures. So if it's just about money for you, go somewhere else with that. Money is cheap. You do understand money is simple. People be, this ain't the conversation. Money is an energy. You do know they print money every day. You do know it's actually people that don't think about money because it's not an, it's not an, it's nothing to them. It's just paper. It's about purpose. If you ever get into the flow of what your purpose is, the money will come to you. I heard the Bible say he shall supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. I don't have to go after no money. What I look like chasing after that? I chase after Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, and then surely goodness and mercy is following me. But purpose is not selfish. Purpose is selfless. So if you really want to see every area of your life increase, then stop making it about you. I don't get out the bed every day because of me. Now that's real. Can I come down my own road for you? I'm give you a real life example. I don't get out the bed every day because of me. Truth be told, I mean, I do like my bills paid. <laughs> but I don't get out the bed for me. I get out the bed for people connected to me. I get out the bed for purpose. The day that God comes and visits me and says, you don't have purpose anymore, you can find me anywhere but here. I'm going to be on a mountain somewhere. I don't know. All right. But I get out the bed every day for purpose. I'm not just saying that for fun. I literally keep it on my mind. It's not about me. I'm getting up for purpose. Somebody say I have purpose if you're with me. And I apply that same strategy of thought to every area of my life. My sufferings, it's not about me, it's about purpose. My success is not about me, it's about purpose. The low moments, it's not about me, it's about purpose. The persecution, it's not about me, it's about purpose. The warfare, it's not about me, it's about purpose. I'm not that special. It's the purpose that God is bringing to fruition. If you got something good out of this, somebody just say God is good. And that's what the Bible is trying to get all of us to understand. I want to pray for you as we depart from this place and this space, as we continue into everything that God has for us. Can I pray for you? Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray for purposed people. Lord, I pray for every single one of your children who are going through the process that is developing them for your purpose. God, I thank you. I thank you in advance for all the increase that you have for them that they don't even know of. I thank you for the expansion that they don't even know of. I see smiling faces, oh God. I see people opening new doors, literally. I see people getting keys to new homes, new warehouses, new business. I see people getting new opportunities. God, I see the joy. And I thank you in advance on behalf of the people for the joy that I see. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray that you continue to keep them in the midst of whatever they're going through. I pray that you shift their focus. I pray that you shift their understanding and their perspective to understand that everything that they're going through is trying to show them who they are. <laughs> God, I thank you that you're doing two things at one time. You are both showing us who you are day by day, moment by moment, situation by situation. So we have to go through low moments to recognize who you are in the low moments, just as we go through high moments to recognize who you are in the high moments. But you're also showing us as we come to a better revelation about who you are, we then have a better revelation about who we are. Father, I thank you for killing two birds with one stone. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you. I thank you for a purposed people, a people who wake up every day, even when they don't feel like it, God, they get up and go after something. Even in a weary place, they keep on fighting anyways. I thank you for a warrior people. I thank you for an army of people. Father, I pray that you solidify their thinking on today. I pray that you place the helmet of salvation upon their head, that every single thought will be covered and protected, guarded by their salvation. I pray that you guard their heart today by righteousness, that right standing with you will be the covering placed upon their heart. I pray that you buckle truth around their waist, oh God, that it cinches it tight. 
I pray that you establish your peace on their feet, oh God, that everywhere they go, go, that everywhere they go, peace is going with them. Everywhere they step, peace is stepping with them. Every situation and circumstance they might find themselves in will yet still be peaceful, not because of the situation, but because of them being present in the situation. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you give them a fresh faith for today. God, people get excited about Friday. Friday is not a magical day. Monday is not a demonic day. They hate Mondays, love Fridays. It's the same thing. You are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. It's the same thing. So God, on today, give us the faith that we need for today. Father, I pray that you pull every person trying to advance themselves into tomorrow back into today. I pray that you push every person still holding on to their yesterday firmly into today. God, I pray that you make us aware of our current experience, that we don't miss our moments, that they don't pass our, us by. God, that we can learn effectively, that we can digest all of the material. That way next week will be better than this week and we'll be able to go from glory to glory, from faith to faith. Father, I pray for your children on tonight, tonight, today. I pray for your children, your children, your children. I pray that that word alone, that confession, being your child will give them all the peace that they need to keep going in their purpose. If we really are your children, that's enough to let us know that we've been sent on a mission. You are a mission focused God. You're always going after something. So Father, as your children, it's our heritage to be warriors. It's our heritage to also rule. It's our heritage to be an authority. It's our heritage to be leaders. Lord, show us how to be better leaders on today. Lord, I pray that every single person who was holding their head down lifts their head up. I pray that every single person that had their shoulders hunched over rolls their shoulders back and stands up in your glory. I pray they go out into the world today, continue in the world today with power in the place that they were powerless, strength in the place that they were once weak, all because of your glory. Father, let this be the moment that they submit to you freshly on today, submitting to you in every area of their life, even submitting to you and their perspective to say, you know what, God, I understand. It's not about me, but it's about you. It's about your purpose flowing through me. It's about your glory being released through me. It's about you being reflected in all the earth. And now I count it honorable to be called by you. Father, let their confession be, I count it honorable to be called by you. Father, if there's anybody you're going to use, go ahead and use me. God, you can trust me. I count it honorable to be used by you, God. Lord, we thank you for the glory that is yet going to be revealed. We thank you for the testimonies that are going to spring forth. We thank you for the stories that are yet going to be told. Father, we thank you for the souls that are going to be saved and the lives that are going to be changed simply because of what you do in our life. The Bible says that the oil falls onto the head, down to the beards, and to the ends of the garment is Aaron's garment. Oh God, I thank you for overflow flowing over every head connected to this ministry, down to everything connected to them and connected to the connected to them. I thank you for connectivity in this season. That though we are all expressing purpose differently, we're yet still connected to the same purpose. I come up against every demonic and manipulative spirit that would have your people believe that they are going through this alone. I come up against every manip manipulative, malicious, and demonic attack of the enemy that would convince your people to believe that they are isolated when they're not. We all have different lives, but we're connected in the living. So, Father, I pray that the same spirit that rose, 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 rose Jesus from the grave will resurrect us now. That every ounce of our faith that has died will be brought back to life. Every area where our hope has faded away, you'll give us a now hope that doesn't disappoint Lord, every idea that we put on the shelf, everything that we tucked away, the relationship, the marriage that we were going to give up on. God, let revival spring about in your people on this Friday, God. Yeah, Friday is not an ending. Friday is a beginning. We're only getting closer to the beginning. We're beginning again. Father, let this be a day that we begin again. Let this word be engrafted into the minds of every believer connected to the sound of my voice, connected to this ministry over all. Father, in the name of Jesus. God, settle them and seal them on this day. I plead your blood, Jesus. 
The blood that yet still speaks for us. The blood that washes away every sin. The blood that equips us when we're lacking equipment. I plead your blood from the crown of every head connected to me to the very soles of their feet. That we'll have blood prints everywhere we step. They'll see red behind us. They'll think it's Christian Louboutin. And we'll just say, no, it was the blood that washed away every ounce of my sin. God, I plead your blood, Jesus, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. From the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. From the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. That everything that they touch shall prosper. Lord, I thank you. We'll forever give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. Amen. If God's been good to you, somebody just say, God is good, God is good, God is good, God is good, if you're with me. If you're with me, somebody say, God is good. Hallelujah to Jesus. Somebody just say, God is good. Listen, it's Friday. As God is increasing you in this season, you've got to make sure that you prove yourself to be responsible. The Bible tells us faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God and God's word puts a deposit in your heart. But then the Bible goes on to say that if the deposit which God placed in your heart is real, your hand will validate it. This is where we worship God in our giving. It's one thing to take the word that God has spoken and run away with the word. God's like, are you going to take everything that I give you and run away from me? Why would God keep giving you something that's going to push you away from him? So Jacob in Genesis chapter 32 says, God, I want you to increase me. Somebody say, I'm increasing. I'm increasing. I'm increasing. If you're with me, God, I want you to expand me. I want you to enlarge my tent. But I want you to know that you can trust me in the increase. I want you to know that you can trust me in the expansion. I want you to know that you giving me more is not going to pull me away from you. It's only going to push me closer. He says, I'm going to honor you with a tenth of everything you give me. Now is your opportunity to worship God in your giving. If you're a tither and you know that you know, had it not been for God, you would not have your bills paid. Provision would not be your portion. This is your time to honor God in your giving. Tithing. The Bible says that the first fruit be holy, everything connected to it be holy. So tithing is where we give a tenth of everything God has given us, our entire income. We give just a tenth back to him. Whatever your income is, a tenth of that thing. That's all God says. And everything else connected to it is blessed. All I want is a tenth. Would you rather God keep the 90 and give you the 10 or you give him the 10 and he, or he give you the 90 and just give him back the 10? Then he promises you. Bring all the tithes into my storehouse. Try me now in this and see if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. You won't even have room enough to receive. If you're believing God for a blessing that blows your mind, somebody say, God, blow my mind. I don't know. I'm not in the season of believing God for small blessings. I'm believing God for big. God, do it big. I've been waiting too long. I've been praying too hard. I've been worshiping too uh, much. God, if it's not going to be big, you can keep it. I'm believing God for big. Leave me astounded. God, blow my mind. That is a promise to the tither. Then the Bible says, you reap what you sow. Mm, given it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. That if you sow sparingly, you will reap sparingly. That means small gets small. But if you're believing God for big, you've got to match that thing. The Bible says faith is only made perfect when there's a fact to match it. Faith without works is dead. This is where we worship God in our giving. There are three ways to sow into this word, to put seed into this ground and to tithe. If you click the link tree in my bio, the first three links, that's how you do it. There's cash app, dollar sign, the Robin Boynton, dollar sign. The Robin Boynton for Cash App. Venmo is at The Robin Boynton. And then there's PayPal. PayPal, you can only access through the link. It's The Robin Boynton, but it's probably easier to just click the link. Venmo and Cash App. If God's been good to you and you got something good out of this, one more time, somebody just say God is good. If you know that you know that God is good. If you're sowing today, putting seed in the ground, I want you to do it in the multiple of seven. Seven speaks to a completion. Didn't I say we're beginning again? Which means, God, I need you to complete this last week so I can step into my new week with nothing left uncovered, nothing left open. If you're sowing, putting seed in the ground, saying I'm putting seed into this word. If you know that you know that you know that this word was for you, put seed in the ground. And a multiple of seven, whatever seven is to you. Again, you got to sow on the level of your faith. So if you really believe God for big, don't play with this thing now. You've got to sow on the level that you believe God in the multiple of seven. Tithing is specific. That's specific to each person. I want to pray over every seed. 
I want to pray over every seed. I want to pray over every seed. I want to pray over every seed. I love you too. I want to pray over every seed. I'm giving you time. Cash app, the Robin Boynton, Venmo, the Robin Boynton, PayPal. And I'm going now. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray for every seed sown. God, I have a special prayer concerning these people because these are the people who have confirmed their faith. Father, every time I say, say something, the people are going to say it. But it's one thing to back up what they said with an action. Those are the people you know without a doubt you can trust those people, God. I'm speaking on their behalf. I'm coming into agreement with their expectation. Father, you said if two agree on anything that they ask, that it shall be done. So, Father, I'm speaking on behalf of those people. I'm placing a fresh covering over those people, God. I know what it's like to be a tither. I know what it's like to sow even when you don't have so. God, I've sown big and I've sown small. I've sown on every level of my living. And I've come to find out that you've never disappointed. So, for those people people who are operating in that same faith, I come into agreement with it. I come into covenant with that faith because I know that to be true. Lord, we live in a generation of people who talk a good game, but seldom are they willing to walk in that thing. I pray a special blessing over every single person who's planting seed in this ground because they're going to walk in that thing. I believe it, oh God. I, put, I, I, I believe it. I'm putting a prayer on it. I'm believing that these are the people who are going to walk in it. Father, I lift up every tithe unto you now. You know what your word says concerning the tithe. So I ask that you be the man of your word that you are. Open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. They won't have room enough to receive. They gave 10%. I pray that you give them 100% return on the 100% that they didn't even have to give. God, blow their mind. That's your prayer. And if we go down in the text, you said that you would protect their harvest. I'm praying a blessing of salvation sustainability over every tither. I'm praying a blessing of longevity over every tire, over every tither. I'm praying a blessing of endurance, financial endurance, physical endurance, spiritual and psychological endurance, emotional endurance over every tither and for every seed sown, every giver who comes into covenant with this message. I decree and declare that this is the day that perspective comes into alignment with the promise. Father, if they're believing for a financial breakthrough, seven is the number of completion. Complete their finances on this level that they can go to the next level. God, settle every debt, oh God. Pay every single bill. Father, that they can elevate in their finances. If it's discipline, if it's discernment, if they're sowing naturally for a spiritual increase, God, respond to the level of their faith on that level. God, whatever their request is, match their faith. You said you would match faith. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. God, I believe you for overflow. Overflow blessings connected to every person sowing into this ministry. Lord, let them be good ground. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that every single seed sown, I'm talking spiritual seed now, Lord, be covered. That when Satan comes to pluck it out, it'll be too far buried in their being for him to find it available. And if the enemy ever tries to convince them that this moment wasn't real, that this wasn't the day of their deliverance, that they're walking away from this the way that they walked into it, I pray the seed that they sown be a reminder, a physical reminder, a stake in the ground, a pillar of your promise concerning them. Lord, we call you Jehovah Jireh. You shall supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. But really, the name was only indicative of the place where you provided. Let their seed be a stake in the ground where they named you who you are to them. Father, I love you and I thank you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Every Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time. If you got something good out of this and you know that you know that you know that you needed this, if this ministry is good to you, if you ate good, listen, if this ministry does not feed you, don't say it. But if you've gotten good food from this ministry, I just want you to say God is good. God is good. God is good. I mean, if you know that you know that you know that this ministry is feeding you good. I'm talking about you might have woke up starving. You might have woke up hungry. But for some reason now <laughs> you're like, you know what? I'm full and I'm ready to go. I just want to make sure that this ministry is still effective because if it's not, baby, you know, if I shut my, hey, listen, if I lost my mind, you can let me know. You can let me know. You can let me know. I want you to know everything. Hallelujah. Thank you to Jesus. <sighs> Prophet is what? Prophet is connected to your purpose. A lot of people start business going after the money. No, if you start a ministry, 
if you start a ministry, if you start a business that impacts people, because your purpose is always about people. If you start a business, if you go after something that impacts people in some way, shape or form, you can be in finance and still be impacting people. Profit comes to you because purpose is always about people. So if you stop making it about the dollar and you start making it about the person, profit will come to you. All you have to do is step into the flow of your purpose. Hear, hear me clearly in this. Where in the Bible do you see God using broke people? I'm going to say that everywhere. Yes, and that's why I was going to say I'm going to say that differently because we're not talking like that. When we look at the people, the names that we go to first in the Bible, were they broke? Were they lacking? I'm going to answer it for you. No, I don't know where they got that from. That serving God means you have to be broke. That serving God means you have to lack. You do recognize they call everybody demonic who yet is successful. You do understand that, right? Everyone who claims to be a Christian and walk with Christ, but has money, who's wealthy, who's successful, who's not struggling. They do say that those people are demonic. No, they are in the Illuminati. Why? Why do you think they're worshiping God? Why do you think that being a devoted Christian, why do, you being the being, why do you think that being a disciple means that you have to lack in resources? Abraham wasn't broke. Moses was not broke. Isaac, none of these people were broke. Okay, New Testament. Peter, Paul, Jacob, these people weren't broke. Paul experienced seasons of lack. So he says, I've learned to be content in every situation and circumstance that I found my in, I've myself and I've learned to be in lack and I've learned to be in abundance. I've learned to be hungry and I've learned to be fed. But these people weren't broke. Jesus started ministry homeless. Well, I mean, he was always on the move, so he didn't have a mansion in one place. But they still were able to do a whole bunch of stuff. They weren't broke. So you've got to break that thought, that ideology that to serve God means you have to be broke. He made them rich in spirit. Yeah, true. But I'm going to talk about that. God desires that you be financially healthy. I desire above all things that you prosper and be in good health as your soul does prosper. So what happens is we go to God. We get our soul saved. The salvation that takes place from the spirit into our soul manifests itself in our life. So every level of my life increases. I got saved. Good. I started getting my emotions together. My soul got better. I broke out of trauma and now I'm able to increase in my finances. Everybody that serves God is not broke. Everybody talks about mega churches. Everybody that serves God is not broke. You pick and choose who you want to be. And just because you broke them, I mean, you're not serving God. It go it, is no thing. But to answer your question, profit is connected to your purpose. That's it. When you get in the flow of what God has called and created you to do, doors open, resources are released easily. Why? Because purpose is not a you thing. It's a God thing. Somebody say, God is comforting me. If you're with me, I love you too. Purpose is not a you thing. It's a God thing, which means there was an earthquake a few minutes after you sold. Hallelujah. That means God is shaking up your situation. God is shaking up your circumstance. Hebrew says everything that can be shaken will be shaken. So that which cannot be shaken will remain. Hebrew says everything that can be shaken will be shaken. So that which cannot be shaken will remain. So sometimes God is shaking up some stuff just so that everything that remains will be what he created you to be all along. And so you got cheated on and you can't let it go. Baby, I got cheated on too. You get over it. I don't know what else to tell you concerning that. I was cheating on too. Go to God. Change your perspective. In fact, that kind of aligns with what we were talking about today. The Bible says the way God comforts you in your situation and circumstance is how you're to comfort other people. So go through whatever season that you're in right now. It's only teaching you how to help somebody else. So if you've been cheating on, cheated on, why would you even want a person that cheated on you? That was my perspective. Why would I even want to be with somebody who cheated on me? Why would I even want to be? Which means why am I going to spend my time crying over you? I'm doing better than every single person I've ever been in a relationship with. 
I'm gonna leave that on the floor. Why would I even wanna be with a cheater? You fumbled the ball on me. Now see, the only time we get caught up on people who didn't value us and do us right, check that, is when we don't understand who we are. When you understand who you are, when you understand who you are, hear me clearly, it doesn't matter. Like, when I know who I am, I know you fumbled the ball. I know you missed out. You got the lesser end of the stick. I mean, it was enjoyable and it was good. I loved you while we were in it. Baby, I know who I am. There's more. And truth be told, I'm going to tell you this. Somebody told me. They don't believe that I am going to find my wife on this level because they're not going to match. They're going to match who I am today, not who I am becoming tomorrow. I am only at the tip of the iceberg concerning my life. And I want to tell you that. You are not anywhere near the fullness of where God is taking you. So if you meet somebody today, they're only going to match you today then you're gonna be brokenhearted that you had to lose somebody because they couldn't go with you till tomorrow. When you finally arise to be who God has created you to be, and you're walking on that level, living on that level, you will attract the person assigned to you on that level. Somebody say, I'm on a new level if you're with me. I'm on a new level. I'm on a new level. I'm on a new level. You don't want to be in an unequally yoked relationship. And one of those relationships where you have to hide your partner and lead your partner at home, at home and you can't take your partner with you, you don't want to be in one of those types of relationships. You want to be in a relationship with a partner that balances you, somebody who can pray for you and provide for you, or somebody who knows how to do something with the provision that you brought in. It's got to be balanced. I love you too, Pastor Woodrow. It's got to be balanced. Somebody say I'm balanced if you're with me. I'm balanced. Your friendships have to be balanced. Your intimate relationships have to be balanced. Your business relationships have to be balanced. There has to be balance. And oftentimes we get into relationships because of a deficit inside of ourselves. And we get into something that leaves us unbalanced. And so I'm wondering, why am I going through un war warfare? Why am I going through all of these situations that are random? It's because you yoked yourself up to something that's unbalanced. And now I'm becoming that which I connected to. Can we go? Bible. The Bible says flee from sexual immorality for there is no other sin except sexual immorality that is done inside the body. Why? Because you take on the spirit of the person that you've laid with. You take on the spirit of the person that you've connected with. So if I've connected with an unlucky person who just keeps getting into trouble, keeps getting into problems, so my life will be a reflection of that person. If I'm connected to a person that's depressed, so shall I be depressed. If I'm connected to a person that doesn't believe, one day I'm going to end up not believing also. So you've got to make sure you're connecting with a person who's balanced. It's one thing for us to be broke together and start out broke, but if two years later we still in the same situation I've connected myself with the wrong person it was cute we laughed in month one but by month five if we're not trying to figure out how to go forward in life I've connected with the wrong one if we can go out and have fun but we ain't got no faith if we can go out on Saturday but we're not together in church on Sunday we aren't balanced if I can talk to you about everything but Jesus you are balanced how do you break it you decide you just make a decision to say, you know what? I don't want this anymore. That was me. I would compromise my faith in every relationship that I got in. Now, I was younger at the time and all this different stuff. I would compromise my faith. Now, I am never compromising my faith. A lot of us get into a relationship and we compromise our faith. Because, I don't know, y'all might be better than me. I am the light. I don't like light. I like darkness. You can hate me if you want to hate me. That's all right. I mean, I've, I've been, oh, I've been changed now, you know, you know, you know, you know. But I've never liked light. I've always liked darkness, you know? And so I would have to shift to the darkness instead of yet being my light. And so I tell you today, a lot of us get into relationships pretending to be someone we're not. And then it gets bad and we're like, oh my gosh, why did it go bad? Well, you weren't even being you for real. And you can never find what's meant to you if you're not being you for real. 
if you're only showing up pretending to be this, pretending to be that, or only expressing 50% of yourself, you're going to get a person that only matches you in the 50 percentile. But if you'll be bold enough to show up as 100% of yourself, faith included, you'll connect with the person that matches every single area of your living. And so you can't be too simple. You can't be too square because I still got a little bit of, I, you know, I got roots. I'm from Detroit. But also you can't be so Detroit that I can't take you to Calabasas. I, you, we got to match each other. And so... Um, there goes that if that blessed you. Um, that's it. Oh, you're not hopping off early. You're hopping off right on time because I've been offered you. I'm getting my hang up button ready <laughs> right now. One more time. Can I try again and put God in the center of your relationship? Absolutely. Just make sure it's a God centered relationship. I got to say that differently. A lot of people try to center God in a relationship that is not God centered, meaning God did not anoint this relationship to be get together. I remember when I got in the relationship with my last ex, literally our first date was Bible study. Our first date. I was doing Instacart at this time and I was living in Dallas, Texas. And I was like, oh, I got to go to Bible study. God bless you. I got to go to Bible study. I got to go to Bible study. You want to come with me? And our first date was Bible study. Uh, normal experience. I'm going to worship my way all day. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. And I ended up going to the altar because I'm going to do what I do. And I'm one person. I go to the altar. I ain't scared to go to the altar. Okay, if I got to go, I'm going to go to the altar. And while I was there, Pastor Vinshar Dobbins, I'll never forget this. He came and he touched me and he was speaking to me in the Holy Ghost. I can't remember what he said verbatim, but I do remember this. I can't remember everything, but I remember this one thing. He said it's a distraction. A distra I can't remember anything else, but I remember him saying it's a distraction. And I was so caught up in wanting to be in this relationship that I ignored that this relationship was what he was talking about. Our first date was there and God had said, get out of it. It's a distraction. Don't do it. I kept pressing in anyways. We ended up breaking well, we ended up breaking it off like two weeks in because it was obvious we weren't meant to be together. And then ain't God good, but then I kept going. And I said, no, I'm gonna try to make God the center of this relationship, though it's not a God-centered relationship. He already said no. I can't make God say yes to what he said no to. Why? Because God sees the ending from the beginning. So there is some stuff in your life that you can avoid. No, you don't have to just go through suffering just to suffer. God will give you instruction to avoid some of your suffering. You've just got to be willing to listen to it. Somebody say, I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm listening. That's the thing. We get mad at some of the stuff we have to go through. We get mad when all hell is breaking loose. Well, I've got to ask you, did you listen to what God said? I went through some stuff because of that relationship and I could never be mad at God because I said you know what Lord I just didn't listen but then I had to pray God grant me the mercy and the grace I know I didn't listen but can you make it all right and didn't he make it all right I said Lord I know I didn't listen I had to confess that to him Lord truth be told I didn't listen you're right I got myself in this mud but will you please God have mercy on my soul and set me free and God has been faithful somebody say he's faithful if you're with me He's faithful, he's faithful, he's faithful. And so, yes, you can make God the center of your relationship, but it has to be a God-centered relationship. A lot of times we make, try to make puzzle pieces fit in a place that they do not fit. Um, I wish I had a better example, but, I mean, it's just going to be what it's going to be. I mean, I could just give you something bold. <laughs> if I try to put this on here to make it the top for this, does it work? No, it don't fit. <laughs> so it doesn't matter how much I try to set up here. It's not going to work. <laughs> I was going to look for a less uh, exaggerated uh, um, display, but shoot, that should have got it right there. <laughs> it's not going to work. <laughs> and I tell you this all the time, and then I'm blessing you, and we're getting up out of here. <laughs> hear me this. <laughs> hear me clearly. Hear me clearly. Hear me clearly. <laughs> if it looks like a duck, and it quacks like a duck, We'll be trying to melt the plastic to stretch it. If it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, if you look down at its feet, because I know sometimes the quack doesn't do it. Sometimes it looking like a duck doesn't do it. So we're still examining and looking. If you look down and you see that its feet are webbed, am I going to call it anything else but a duck? If so, I'm delusional. Oh, no, girl, his grandma died. No, girl, that's just how he is. Girl, he's going through something. Girl, he's got cases. No, it's a duck. 
nah, you know, you know, you know, she, I can convince her. I'm going to make more money and I'm going to convince her. I'm going to get more opportunity and I'm going to convince her. No, 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 I'm going to buy another chain and I'm going to convince her. I'm going to get another degree and I'm going to convince her. If they for you, you ain't got to convince them. If it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's a duck. Man looks at the outward appearance. God looks at the heart. This is free lunch. I'm getting out of here. Man looks at, I got to go. I do have an appointment. Man looks at the outward appearance. God looks at the heart, right? Sometimes we get so caught up in trying to be God and look at the heart that we miss out that our responsibility is to pay attention to what we see with our eyes. That's why you got to put the word into full scope. You can't just pull out and pick out. Do not look at the things which are seen. Okay, obviously this person's actions are conducive to a person who doesn't want to be with me. But don't look at the things which are seen. That's not what that meant. That was speaking to God things. Man looks at the outward appearance, meaning it's my job to go based on evidence. The God in me can see the potential in people. Because God looks at the heart. The God in me can see the potential of somebody. I can see what you can be. I can see what you're capable of. I can see what's possible. That's the God in me. But the God in me is not the one that's going to be marrying you. The God in me is not the one that's going to be having a relationship with you. That's the me me. That's the flesh me. We are having a carnal relationship. So if I'm only in a relationship with you based on what the God in me saw, it's a disconnect. I've got to make sure that what the God in me sees matches what the man sees. I've got to make sure that I see two. They, they got to come into agreement. Now, that was free lunch. And so a lot of people just live on what they see is potential. All things are possible, but everybody doesn't do everything because you have to also actualize that possibility. Somebody's saying, I've got this and we're going now. If you're with me. Hammer and Nails, Midtown, Atlanta. Shut up. To Atlanta. You're welcome. God bless you. I love you. I'm going to bless you and we're going to go. Everything as it relates to this ministry is linked in my bio. You can still put seed into the ground of this ministry. If you are sowing today, sow in a multiple of seven to come into covenant and agreement with this word. Somebody say, I agree. I love you too, Madison. Oh, excuse me. Somebody say, I agree. I love you. I love you. I love you. Somebody say, I agree. If you're coming into agreement with this thing, I love you. I love you right back. I agree. If two agree on anything that they ask, I've agreed and you've agreed. You ain't need nobody else to support you and back you up. I've got your back. I'm with you right here. Three ways. Seven. I love you. No bars. Come on. <laughs> um, 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 um. Oh, three ways to sow into this ministry. Right. Uh, multiple of seven to put seed in the ground. Cash out the Robin Point, Venmo the Robin Point, and PayPal linked in my bio. First three links. After that, if you're not in the ministry group chat, you gotta get in the group chat. You've gotta join the hub. Over 930 people. I don't even know the number right now. Are in it? You gotta join. If you click the link in my bio, you'll see ministry hub, ministry group chat. Join, 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 join. And after that, you'll see an app. Uh, once you join the ministry group chat, download the app and go from there. This and every single live replay is reposted on my. YouTube. As soon as I get off here, I'm going to be posting two. They're already uploaded. I'm just going to unprivate them so they can be there. It's going to be yesterday's Command Your Morning. 987, you think? Almost a thousand people, baby. <laughs> Almost a thousand. See, we could have got it last month, but we're here now. Almost a thousand people in the ministry group chat. Will you be the one that makes us a thousand? I have a special gift for the person that makes it 1,000. I'm going to do that. I got to make sure I'm paying attention, though. I hope there's a way that I can track it because I got to figure out who's the first person <laughs> that, what you call it, reaches, that, that makes the number go to a thousand. And I'm going to bless you. Um, and so there goes that. Make sure you download the app. Check out this live replay. And that's all I've got. I'm ready to bless you. Are you ready? I'm about to give you the priestly blessing. So I can't give it to you unless you know that you know that you know that you are royalty. Somebody say I'm royalty if you're with me. You got to know that you're royal. This is why when I prayed earlier, I prayed, Lord, everyone whose head is hanging low, Lord, lift their head up high. Everyone whose head is hanging low, lift their head up high. Why? Because if you keep your head hanging too low, your crown is going to fall. Alexa, stop my alarm. If you keep your head hanging low, 
your crown is going to fall. Hold your head up high. You are a child of the king. Not a king. You are, the, you are a child of the king. The most high king. The one that sits above everybody else. The Lord of Lords. The King of Kings. The one who's in full authority. Sovereign. All powerful. Supreme ruler. That is who you are underneath. Which means you are yet above all of these other kingdoms as well. We're at war with powers and principalities, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. But lo, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And there is nothing that shall by any means harm you. It's only helping you. If the Bible says that there is nothing that shall by any means harm you, it must mean whatever God allows you to go through is to help you, not hurt you. So shift your perspective. Now may the Lord bless and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance and give you peace that will sustain you throughout every single season of your purpose. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I gotta go. I have an appointment in 15 minutes. Thankfully, I'm right around the corner from it. Thankfully, I'm right around the corner. See, you gotta watch. You see your enemies everywhere but at the bank, child. <laughs> they be everywhere but the bank Baby, you be up in the comments section You be coming on the live trying to pollute the live But when I go to the bank, I don't see you there I love you too <laughs> Let me send a cash out before God shakes this ground again <laughs> You can sow into this ministry Number seven, if you're sowing into this ground Multiple of seven If you're tithing, you take whatever your income is 10% of that thing I'm hanging up on you now Go be great, I love you Remember, you've got this. Remember that God is for you. And because God is for you, nothing can be against you. Remember that you're a leader. So I want you to go out and lead. Peace out. I'm going to get up on you in three, two, one. I love you too.